games to so many different people means so many different things. For example, maybe you grew up with games and you use them as sort of an escape from when you were having a hard time as a kid. Maybe you use them socially, playing with your friends or siblings or parents. Maybe you just really enjoy the worlds built and exploring and feeling in control. Regardless of why you love video games, we all do. And that's why you're here today, to see my top 20 favorite games of all time. Before we get into that, I'm gonna put a little disclaimer here. I want you guys to understand that this is completely my opinion, and these are super personal picks. My list is not gonna be the same as yours. Your list is not gonna be the same as the person right next to you. It's gonna be all very different because we all have different tastes and different memories. This list is gonna be completely clouded by nostalgia, so Get ready for that, and we're just going to get started with the video with my top 20 favorite games of all time. Number 20 is Pikachu's Poke Park 2. Now, you might be wondering why this game is even on this list. It's sort of a niche game, and then it's a sequel to a niche game, Poke Park 2. Now, I really, really loved the original, and when this second game came out, I was super excited for it. I think I was around the perfect age, I think I was like 7 years old, and I really enjoyed the Pokemon franchise, just in general. My brother played a lot of the games on his DS, and he, I would sit there and I'd watch it with him. I didn't really like those games too much, because I like to feel like I was the Pokemon, and in those games it felt... It was turn-based, you know? It doesn't feel like what you envision it feeling like in the anime. We've made a lot of strides in the past couple of years to make it feel more like that, but Pikachu's Poke Park was really the first time I felt like I was controlling a Pokemon, like I was that Pokemon from, from the show. And so, because of that, I loved it. And when the sequel came out, I remember I went to GameStop with my grandma, and the game was on sale for like $9, because it wasn't even a great game. And the, the game design and stuff, it's not great, but it was fun, because there were like different challenges that you need to do, and the gameplay of it is sort of just like an open area that you explore and do quests for and then you do little mini games in them there's like platforming segments there's chase segments and different stuff like that that isn't complicated it's very simple it's very easy it's straight to the point but because of that simplicity it was actually one of the first games i actually beat completely by myself not with my brother's help or my dad's help or anything it was just a full experience for me and that was really special and i just remember being so excited i remember seeing it in gamestop and being so so excited my grandma was like hyped because it was nine dollars and she was like i can swing nine dollars and it was a good time i had hours and hours of fun with this game and that's why it's number 20. moving on to number 19 is a game i have a ton of memories about so back when I was a kid, on New Year's Eve, my mom always used to throw this big party for all the kids in my school and all the parents and stuff, and the, the parents had a good time. We used to have, like, Nerf Wars and a bunch of just random stuff. We'd just, like, fight each other, usually divided into, like, my class versus my brother's class, and he's three years older, and we'd have Nerf Wars and, like, do all this stuff. But one thing that always brought us together was the Michael Jackson The Experience video game. It was basically just dance, but michael jackson songs my family was sort of big on his songs and i i even to this day i get down to his songs you guys if you guys ever <laughs> catch me in the wild you'll see me shuffling to bad i'm kind of a beast with it anyways because of that we all had such a good time and we'd like come together to dance to these songs and do these iconic dances and stuff and it was just so much fun my brother had the glove and the hat and he would <laughs> you know he's like hee hee he would always like grab his hat and do it. It was so cool. Like just the memories associated with that just make that game so much fun for me. Even going back now, I've played it a couple times as I've gotten older and me and my friends always have such a good time with it because like those Michael Jackson moves are iconic and then you put that in a video game and then you have all these people coming together. It's just like a really fun time. Plus it's just dance essentially. So it's like all those games where anyone can pick up and play and understand how you do it because you just follow what they say on the screen as you do the moves in real life. And let me tell you guys, when I learned how to moonwalk, the first thing I did was pick this game back up. Because, I mean, come on. If you guys ever want to see me moonwalk, subscribe, right? So those last two picks have been a little bit random, very deep cuts, I guess, into the psyche of who I am. But this one's more general. I think a lot of people are going to have some game in this franchise on their list. And that game is... Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now, this is the Mario Kart on the Switch. However, it was also on the Wii U. Now, I love the Switch version for so many reasons, but a lot of it is because I have so many memories and just, even like to this day, it happens all the time. I'll bring my Switch with me, I'll have a couple friends with me, I'll take off the Joy-Cons, and we'll just 
pop out a game of Mario Kart. It's easy, it's fast, and plus, once you get to college, Mario Kart has a whole new meaning. And I'm not going to go too in-depth for that, because I'm not going to out myself, but... Like, it gets super, super fun. It's just a game that I have continuously played with people over the last six years. I've played it with my parents, I've played it with my brother, my cousins, my friends, these people I, like, barely know. Like, you just kind of play it with everybody, and it brings you together. Of course, it's not, like, a perfect game in, in the terms of a game, like, an objective game, but because this is my favorite and because of the memories associated with this, that's why it's on this list. I would love to have another Mario Kart game. I mean, I seriously am getting sick and tired of this game, but every time I break it out with people and I break it out with the fam or we're just, like, chilling in college, you know, playing, it's, it's a good time and it always has a way of bringing everyone together. Everyone knows what Mario Kart is and it, like, lowers that barrier of entry. The assisted steering, the auto moving, they have a lot of accessibility features that allow it to be a more of a break open game than something like Smash, for example, which is also a banger, but it's not on this list. Number 17 is Batman Arkham Knights. Now, you probably don't think I'm a Batman Arkham Knight person, and to be quite honest, I'm, I'm, I'm not. The reason this game is on the list is actually because my brother played through the whole thing, but you know what I did? I sat there right next to him and I watched the whole thing. I was very, very young. I was probably around seven or eight, and I'd sit there and I'd watch my brother play through these games, and whenever he got stuck on puzzles, we would like brainstorm together, and I would tell him, you know, I'd be like, oh, I think maybe we should go there. Maybe we missed this clue over there because, you know, this game is all about there's like random puzzles and you got to figure out where you got to go and when you're both kids it can get very confusing but this game has a lot of fond memories because there would be like hours where he was stuck and he'd like come in my room and he'd be like joe's come here like we got to figure this out and i'd go in there and we'd figure it out and it was just really fun even though i didn't even play the game really there were occasional times where he'd like you know let me take the controller and i'd I do a couple things. I liked zip lining. I liked the batarang. You know, they, they had some very cool mechanics. The controls were great. They're very fun games and they're very cinematic. It was a really great experience just because of that closeness that I had with my brother. And that was something that like really built a lot of our sibling relationship other than of course, like the classic sibling stuff where we brawl with each other. We also had these moments that were very nice where we I just sit with him as he played through an entire game. You're going to see a couple other games like that in this list where I didn't necessarily play them, but I know everything about them. I've seen the whole story. I do. I've played them technically and I've technically beat them, but it just wasn't me beating them, you know, but I was helping. So I'm going to count it. Plus, this is my list. If you have a problem with it, make your own. Number 16 is very similar to the last game, Uncharted 3. Now, the whole Uncharted franchise, me and my brother ate that up. We would, we would play these games for a very long time, but it was mostly him. And I just really enjoyed watching it all unfold. The thing about Uncharted is that it's surprisingly cinematic. There's these quick time events occasionally that are very cinematic and tense. And I don't know if a lot of people like them, but I just remember as a kid, like so engaged. I was like, I was like, dude, you got to press the button right now. X, X, X. You know, like we would go crazy with that stuff. And it was just really fun to see that whole thing. The story in these games are also great. I love the characters. And to be honest, I even kind of like the movie. I mean, I might be just enjoying it because of Tom Holland and the the property of in Uncharted itself, but I thought it wasn't that bad. Number 15 is ARMS, and before you click off the video, let's calm down a little bit. I have a very, very, um, I guess, heartfelt story for this one. So when I was a freshman in high school, I played volleyball with this girl, and she was a couple like towns over because I played volleyball in the towns over, and she was diagnosed with leukemia. And that was really scary for me. Um, and obviously for her, I mean, thank she's she's all good now. She's chilling. But I went with her to one of her appointments, and I just remember being like really scared um, because I'd never seen anybody in like have to go through that. And she was like my best friend, and so it was it was pretty scary. I skipped school for it. Um, that was fun. But and and we made a day out of it. You know, it was fun beforehand, but. Um, in that moment in the hospital was horrifying for me and I'm sure for her. But I didn't want to, you know, freak her out even more, or, you know, make her mom even more upset or make it harder. I was there to like help the situation. I was there to make my friend feel better. I brought my Switch. Um, and like I said, we both played volleyball together. So while she was going through that whole treatment, it takes, it's a process. It takes a while. So what I did was I, br I broke out the switch and, and I set it up and, uh, we sat there and we played volleyball together. 
And that was really special because she hadn't been able to come to volleyball practice because of what she was going through. And so by by sitting in this room and playing this game together, it was like old times. And ARMS isn't even that great of a game, you know, like it's a, I like it. Um, but because of that memory, it really is something special to me. It's also the first game I got with my Switch. It was automatically bundled in when I got my bundle from GameStop. So that was also part of it. But really the reason it's on that on this list is because of my friend. It was just such a special memory. I don't know. I just remember we had such a good time and we both kind of forgot about what was happening around us and it, it, it helped the situation a lot. The situation that for a 15 year old was very, very scary. A few moments later. Kind of going in a different direction now is number 14, Metroid Dread. This game is really on the list because I loved the game. I had a great time. This was my first game in the Metroid franchise and it was fantastic. It really grabbed me into this whole it like it made me buy into what metroid is before i was a little bit nervous to get into the metroid franchise because i've heard it's very very difficult and dread was brutal however because of a lot of the modernizations that they did to gameplay to the map system to different things like that and just the intuitive nature of metroid at least metroid dread it really allowed me to get into it and fall in love with the game the boss battles were great the gameplay was smooth and solid and amazing and everything just like went into making this game so special. I beat it pretty fast and then I went back and I played through it again because I just had so much fun with it and it truly is like one of the greatest games on the Nintendo Switch and it's one of my favorite games of all time it's obviously why it's on this list. It's just so much fun and I think the way it introduced me to the rest of the Metroid franchise is what really makes it special to me. So because of this game I played Metroid Prime Remastered when that came to the Switch. Then I went back and I played Super Metroid. I played Metroid Fusion. I'm patiently waiting for Zero Mission to pop out on the Switch so I can get into that. Then I'm going to play Samus Return it really got me invested into the Metroid franchise and I'm bought in now for Metroid Prime 4 so I'm hoping that actually comes out. Then at number 13 we have Splatoon and I'm kind of grouping one and two together here. It's mostly I'm talking about two, but one was also really special because that was again my introduction to the series on the Wii U. When I got my Wii U, it was actually already preloaded onto it because I got my Wii U pretty late in the game and I had a fantastic time. What was really cool about Splatoon 1 is that they had a co-op mode and me and my brother would play that for a while and that was a good time. Plus they had Squid Jump and oh my God, I love that game so much. But Splatoon 2 was also a phenomenal time. It brought us things like Salmon Run and it modern a lot of the stuff brought it over to the switch created like there was so much competitiveness around this game that I hadn't seen on the Wii U there it was there on the Wii U but it wasn't quite as widespread because of course the switch had a way bigger install base so Splatoon actually had a way bigger chance of success which it did and now we have a third one this game was really really fun the single player was amazing and they added a lot just in general with salmon run with new ranked modes things like that and they refined the gameplay so much that it was a it was a blast in splatoon 1 i played rollers exclusively but i wasn't very good in splatoon run splatoon 2 i got kind of cracked and then i started playing a lot with the end zap 83 and then a lot with the dualies as well because the dualies is so cool because you have that roll move and if you don't know, Splatoon is a third-person shooter where the goal is to ink as much turf as you can. And there's a lot of different modes that kind of go off of that. There's like a boss rush mode. There's a single player that's sort of like platform-esque, which is also a ton of fun. And Splatoon just has a lot of different elements to it with the style and the music and stuff that all goes into like creating this amazing feel. It feels like a very modern Nintendo game. And I'm so glad that they let this younger team really just like do whatever they wanted. They created a phenomenal game and I'm patiently waiting for whatever happens next in the Splatoon franchise. I'm loving Splatoon 3 right now. Like legitimately I love all the Splatoon games but I guess on this list at number 12 would be Splatoon 2 just because it's the game that I've played so much of. I think I have almost like 300 hours in it which I know compared to a lot of people is not that much but that's the most hours I have in any game. I don't usually just sit there and play one game forever but I've consistently played Splatoon 2 for six years and that's got to say something about my love for the game. Number 12 is Super Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy is a game that I played with my cousin on Steam. So for Christmas, like when me and my cousin got a little bit older, we're only two years apart, so we were pretty close. When we got older, we would ask our grandma and, and like our aunt and uncles and stuff 
to give us Steam gift cards because there was always a holiday sale and the games were so cheap. And if you got like a $20 gift card, you could get like four games and they were like some of the best games of all time. That's how I played the Portal games and that's how I played Super Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy was so much fun because I have always loved platformers. I've always resonated very much with like the Mario franchise, Donkey Kong, things like that. However, this was like a whole different take on it. I'd never seen it so fast paced and so slick and you die all the time, but you get right back into the action. Me and my cousin had so much fun because we would switch off every time the other person died. And playing this on computer was pretty cool because it's it's very precise, but we only had MacBooks. So we were like sitting there, space, space bar, up, up, you know, like with the MacBook computers, which is not ideal, but we just had such a good time. It also ran like a beast. It was just a very fun experience. I love the physics. I absolutely adore the art style of this as well. I think it's so funny that every time Meat Boy dies, it looks like a huge blood splatter, but it's not. It's just it's just his meat is all over it. Which is a crazy statement, but um that was a good game. Number 11 is Box Boy plus Box Girl, and this is a game that came out for the Nintendo Switch in 2019. I played this when it originally came out. I played through the entire single player campaign, and I thought it was cute. I thought it was a fun puzzle platformer, but I didn't absolutely love this game, and it wouldn't be on this list if it weren't for the multiplayer. So you can play this whole game, co-op, and it's basically a separate campaign, and you play it very differently. Because in Box Boy, traditionally what you do is you're a box, and then you have other boxes that spawn off of you. And then you use those boxes to like jump and slide yourself and, and create different platforms to get yourself up to different areas. It's a puzzle platformer in every sense of the word. But the co-op way, you think about things very differently. And what's really cool is you can like jump on each other which is hysterical. So it's like, I can go down and then the box girl can, I don't remember her name, but she can uh, jump on QB, which is box boy, and then jump up. And you get more stars based on the amount of boxes you use. So if you use less boxes, you get more stars. And if you use more boxes, you get less stars, stuff like that. And so in college, this is a very, very college story because I, <laughs> me and my boyfriend had a day where we went and did a lot. We were exhausted. So then we ended up like falling asleep for like three hours in the middle of the day and we woke up at like 12 at night wide awake like could not go to bed we were wide awake but we were in dorms so what we did is we went to my car which was parked like in the school parking lot and we pulled an all-nighter sitting in the car playing box boy we just sat there we put the we put the switch screen up against the dashboard popped out two Joy-Cons and played through the entire co-op campaign. We played for like six hours straight. And then we, after we beat it, we drove to Target, got food and then crashed. But it was so funny and it was like such a fun memory. I just, the way you can be clever and the way you communicate with each other in that game is so fun because it's not like an overcooked where it's chaotic. You can take your time, you can pace yourself, but then when you're clever and you figure something out that the other person wasn't figuring out, cause like you two are working together, it's so fun. If you have any sort of significant other or anything like that, I highly recommend that you try out this game with them. It is so much fun. This is probably my favorite co-op game on the entire Nintendo Switch. And I feel like a lot of people sleep on it and don't even realize it has a co-op campaign. Taking us into the top 10 is Tekken 3. Now this was actually the first game I ever played. And that's why it's on this list. It shaped a lot of my enjoyment of video games. I remember I'd sit there and I watch my brother and my dad play and I just think, ah, oh, that's so cool. I wish I could play. And then when I got a little bit older, I started playing with my brother and he'd kick my ass. He was not going easy. As a little three-year-old, as he was a six-year-old, he would just sit there and beat the shit out of me, which was fine. But then I would get super frustrated. And so then my dad would feel bad and then he'd play against me and then obviously he'd let me win occasionally. And so then I was like addicted. Like I loved the feeling of kicking ass in Tekken. I used to play Eddie and he was the breakdancer one. So he would just, I'd do his thing where he would just spin like on his hands and he would mess them up. Eventually at like 10 years old, when my brother was like around 13, 12 ish, we started playing Tekken again, but I think it was like Tekken four on the PlayStation three. Cause Tekken three, I believe was on the PlayStation two. And then now he won't play me in fighting games because of that childhood trauma of him just kicking my ass. I've gotten 
immeasurably good at those games so that every time he dares to ask if I want to play a fighting game against him, I know for a fact that he is going down and it's going to be an easy victory. One time I perfect him, so that means he gave me no damage and the way this guy was fuming. I mean, top 10 moment of my life, probably. Number nine is a very, very, very recent game. It's actually Tears of the Kingdom. This is a phenomenal game. The way you can be so creative and do so many different things. And, and I think why this game feels special to me and special enough to be on this list right now. And you could say it's recency biased and it very well might be. But really, a lot of it is how you can do legitimately anything. You can roast alive Koroks, you can crucify Koroks, you can do all the story, you can not do the story, you can fuse different weapons, you can go wherever you want, you can travel up, you can travel down, you can go across the sprawling land of Hyrule, and it's just such a lived-in phenomenal world that lives up to every expectation I have literally ever had. I'm having such a good time just playing this with people because it's such a movement right now. Everyone all over is playing this game, and so everywhere you look on social media, you're seeing different stuff with Tears of the Kingdom. And that's just so infectious and fun. And I, I love the vibe of it right now. My boyfriend's playing this at the same time that I am. And we will just sit together and play it for like a couple hours, not even talking to each other, but just like sitting next to each other playing it. And something like that is something that I really, really value. And I really, really love because it just you're having like a shared experience with someone on your own pace. And I don't know if that makes a lot of sense to people, but for me, that's really special. And I think that's why this game has, you know, ranked so high. Maybe if I do this list again in a year or so, my list might change. And, you know, it's it very well, there, there might be different games that come and go and Tears of the Kingdom might get knocked back or whatever. But for right now, based off of recency bias and my love of Breath of the Wild and how this basically builds off of everything from Breath of the Wild, I've got to give it to Tears of the Kingdom. This totally is one of the best games of all time, point blank period, objectively. But to me, it's one of my favorites just because of, like I've said, that creativity and that movement that it's had all over the place. I've had a blast just making content surrounding this game. Number eight on the list is Donkey Kong Country. Donkey Kong Country came out for the Wii. And you can see that there's a lot of Wii games on here and I apologize, but that is what I grew up with. And so it, it does, I feel like it makes sense. This game, I remember, I saw it in the store at GameStop, it was like 20 bucks, and I was like, Dad, we have to check out this game, I, I just, I love the graphics of it, like it captivated me for some reason. Never playing a Donkey Kong game before this, and then going into Donkey Kong Country was brutal. It's, it's a pretty difficult game, especially for a kid, I think I was like 6 years old, but I love this game. I played it, I beat it, and this was one of the first games I beat as well. It wasn't the first, but I believe it was the third game I ever beat, and it was such a good time. That nostalgia that I have for it, just like is something so special to me because I remember being so proud of myself for beating this game. It's kind of a hard game with the boss battles at times and getting a hang of the motion controls and stuff. I remember there was one thing that I was stuck on and I asked my dad to help me and even he was having the worst time. And then I was like, ah, oh, just let me try. And I tried and then we beat the freaking game. And that was super special because as a kid, there's so many times when you get lost and you're not playing a game really how it's intended. You're not finishing the game. You're just kind of messing around. You're doing what you think you're supposed to do, but you're usually not right. And that happened to me all the time in games. But in this game, it was linear. It was a set path. I just clicked on the next level and I kept going. And that ability to just jump right into the next level after feeling proud of myself for beating something so difficult... I mean, it was a good time. I remember I would get fuming. I would like chuck the nunchuck all the time. I'd like chuck it on the couch. I'd be like, ah, oh, this is, this is trash. I can't believe I'm playing this game. Like little six-year-old Josie would get fuming at this game. But then once I finally beat it, I was like, ah, that was a fire game. And since then, I've absolutely loved Donkey Kong. Like it inspired that love of the franchise for me. I've gone back and I've played the SNES ones. I haven't played Donkey Kong 64 because it seems a little wild, but the predecessor after this game, love it so much. And I'm patiently waiting for a new Donkey Kong because I know that they always deliver amazing, amazing platformers, but I mean, where's the one on the Switch, right? Taking us over into the Sony realm, we have number seven, Little Big Planet 3. Little Big Planet 3 came out on the PS4 and it's a phenomenal game. I love Little Big Planet. This is one of those franchises from Sony that is like a nostalgic classic for me. I grew up playing the first and the second one on the PlayStation 3 with my brother. This was the game that we always played together 
because the other ones we would get frustrated and just yell at each other and then it'd be a problem and then my mom would be like what's going on and then we were like ah and then we like wouldn't play video games with each other for like a solid month after that but every time we played a little big planet game it was so much fun because you can easily play that with multiple people we'd go for all the collectibles because we really like decorating our pod and we deck like deck it out with everything you possibly could if you don't know little big planet is a platforming game where you just platform your way through different obstacles. It's sort of similar to games like Mario in a way. It's just a 2D platformer and you're moving your way through it, but it has its own characteristics a lot. They have the characters of Sackboy. You can dress them up in different ways. You can stamp them, which was so much fun. And there's different ways you can interact with it. It also sort of had a, like a level builder built into it, especially in the third game, which is interesting because this team then went off to create Dreams, which is basically just a game engine for fans to make games for the PS4. They recently put another one on PS5, Sackboy Adventure, and that's not the same glory as Little Big Planet, but I do definitely want to play it at some point. I'm just waiting for my brother to be home so we can get through it together because that game was so fun for the both of us. We'd split the pod down the middle and I'd have my side and he'd have his side and we'd like deck it out with all the stuff we've got. It was such a good time. I mean, it just has so much character and charm. If you've never played these games, I could not recommend a game more. It's very simple. It's pretty straightforward. If you've got a significant other, a kid, a friend, play it. Number six is another kind of offbeat one. This is Subnautica. Subnautica is a game where you explore underwater. You're a scuba diver thing and you're just going around collecting, scavenging and like building out a base for yourself essentially you can do all these different things you can craft all these different systems and when i played this game it was actually just in beta on steam i still believe i paid like 20 dollars for it and i got it again with my cousin from those steam gift cards that we talked about earlier and it was such a good time i remember we were really trying to get this submarine thing because there's different vehicles that you can drive and that makes it easier because i believe you have to like return to the base to get oxygen i might be wrong but for some reason, I remember that the vehicles in this game were pretty important because it allows you to get to places easier, faster, smoother, stuff like that, like any normal vehicle would do in a video game. So we were like getting all these materials to build this submarine and it was super difficult to get all these materials. Like it was not coming together. Like, like we, we thought we were just, it was a lost cause. And then we travel a little bit too far and right as we think we're going to die, a submarine just randomly chilling there just a deserted submarine and we just got in it and drove it that was so special it, like that was also the first open world game i really played and like ex like saw everything and the crafting mechanics and stuff like that and of course i played minecraft but like these crafting mechanics here really like showed me what a game could be and i don't like underwater games usually but this game freaking phenomenal if you haven't played subnautica like seriously try it out it's out of beta now and it's actually a very just good game point blank number five again going back to the Wii theme of it all is Wii Sports this was of course the game that we all played with the Wii whenever I'd have friends over as a kid we'd play Wii Sports I was absolutely cracked at tennis I was a pro at like five years old playing tennis against my dad it was one of my favorite things to do was just have a Wii night with my family when I was a kid we'd do it all the time my brother would do this thing where he was like can we just have some family time and then we'd all like sit in the living room and play this game together like even my mom and she, and she she's she likes pac-man i mean she's kind of an animal with that but she's not super into video games but this game always got her in the wii had something special about it where everyone could pick up their wii controller and understand that oh, i'm playing baseball i'm supposed to swing you know like it was super super fun my brother was super into baseball so he loved that one i loved boxing i was kind of a beast with that i would always do that as a kid like play that game freaking matt was an animal and just like all the memes now and how it's coming back i even got it don't tell nintendo this but i got it up and running on my computer and it is some of the most fun i have genuinely love wii sports it's it's just it's a beast switch sports it's not a bad game it doesn't have that charm all right, the one everybody knew was coming because I talked about its sequel as the 20th ge favorite game of all time. But at number four, we have Pikachu's Poke Park. This was actually the first game I ever beat. This was super exciting for me. I, my mom, I believe, got this game for me. And I had so much fun because it was everything I envisioned a Pokemon game should be. I was playing as Pikachu and I felt in control of that. I thought that was really cool. I loved this Pokemon world that they built out because to me, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm just walking around the world. And as a kid, it's like, you're not going to notice 
bad game design if it's there you're not gonna notice kind of a boring gameplay if you're having fun and the way it just captivated exactly what i dreamed a pokemon world should be obviously now we have better games like legends arceus who have figured that out much better but at the time poke park was cool for that and in poke park it's just like i said it's a big open area for you to do a bunch of stuff and that stuff was a lot of fun. And I remember I used to have a really hard time with the chase sequences because they take these corners so tight. And I was not good with controls when I was a kid. So I was like, what the, where did it go? You know? And so it was just, it was fun. And when I beat that game, I felt so proud of myself. But I remember like going back to it, went into it and they're like, congratulations. Like you've saved us or like we we're all friends or something. And I was like, okay, cool. Where's the next thing? That's why Poke Park 2 is also on this list because I thought it was a good time as well. Let me be clear that I do know that these games don't really hold up. I know it's full nostalgia. Point blank blind nostalgia. I've I've watched tons of videos of people dunking on this game and I pretty much agree with all of it. It's not a, not a perfect game, but it has so many fun memories associated with it and that's what really I think that's what gaming is and that's why it's so special to people is because of your experience with that game, you know? Number three is a super, super weird one, but it's Club Penguin. This is a computer game, so I guess you can consider me a PC gamer on the down low. I was an animal with Club Penguin back in the day. This was the game that we all played with each other. Like, me and my friends would play this game together because everybody was into this game. And literally, there wasn't a lot to do. It was very, very simple. You're at a lodge, you go out of the lodge, you can go fishing, they have different mini games. They had fun things to do throughout the year, like different holiday themed events stuff like that and i never once paid for the club penguin membership but i had so many puffins and the reason i had puffins is because i grinded that game i grinded it to a halt now what is genuinely special about this game probably not a lot but it was a cool place to hang out in and when you're a kid it's not like you're gonna be like mm, i don't know about these graphics I don't know about the walking animation. I don't know about the, it's it's just it's just vibes. It's just a good time. You know, building out your igloo was so much fun. You can go and like party with people at the at the dance floor. You could go play different like it just it basically was this hub for all these different mini games. And it was such a good time. I, it's a shame that got discontinued. Thank you to the fans for keeping that thing still alive because it's still up and running and I've occasionally when I'm feeling nostalgic I'll jump back into it because it legitimately it was fun and it has charm to it because of these characters. You can't tell me that this character isn't memorable. It's adorable, it's a thing. It's, it's been a thing and it's a reason it was such a popular event in pop culture, especially for people around my age. I mean, I'm sure if you guys are around 20, upwards of 25, you probably remember this game very well. Fondly, probably. It's a good game, it's a banger. Getting into like the actual banger banger games, these are some good ones, so so hopefully you guys sort of like agree with me on these, but number two is Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. This game is amazing. I don't think that there is a better 2D platformer out there. I really don't. I think it's the best 2D platformer ever made, just in general. Like, it is so, so good. This objectively is my favorite, is like the best game of all time to me. It's beaten out by one game just because of some of the memories associated with it. But this game I also played back on the Wii U and I think like 2015, I was 12 years old and I remember raging to this game. The boss battles, the, there's this bird and he like flies all these feathers at you and you have to jump in these barrels at the right time. And now I've got the timing down because I've beaten this game four times because I'm a, I, I love it. But at the time, 12 year old Josie was flipping out. I think I almost broke my Wii U Pro controller. I was throwing it so hard. I was pissed. But that game was so amazing. Like, so fun. It was hard, it was difficult, but every time you got past the level, you were so proud of yourself. Like, it was, it was a, it was a thing to be excited about. I feel like I should have gotten a goddamn award after I beat that game for the first time. I, I don't think I've tried that hard in something in a long time. So, here's the thing. I played volleyball as a kid, like, forever, and I would come home from practice and play this game, and I would sweat more than I did in practice. In this game and it's not it's not knocks of volleyball because i was drenched in volleyball i was soaked i was pissed i would i would like you could like there was a vein popping out of my head my neck was stiff my arms like everything in me was flexed playing this game because i was so tense and pissed off the whole time but goddamn 
such a good game. I love it. And then it was ported to the Switch. I replayed it on Switch, of course, like, but I didn't buy it right away because they priced it at $60, which was a little egregious. I bought it on Black Friday for $30. I thought it was 1000% worth it. And I played through the whole game again. It holds up so well and I continue to get pissed off a little bit, but I was a little bit better than I was the first time. So that made me feel good, but it's just stunning. The graphics are great. Donkey Kong plays like I don't know how retro did it where they just legitimately crafted the best 2D platformer ever with some of this most amazing graphics, the best art style, like legitimately so, so good. I'm like really excited to see what Donkey Kong could be on the Switch. What is the next Donkey Kong and when the hell are we getting it retro? I need it so bad. At number one is the second game I ever beat right after Pikachu's Poke Park. This game was monumental. It shaped a lot of what we know as modern day Mario and that is Mario Galaxy. This game is inventive, creative, insane, more adjective, like I don't know how else to describe this game other than phenomenal. The level design itself just creates so much fun. It's just fun. You can get around in Mario Odyssey and the controls are really great with the Wii. A lot of people don't like motion controls, but I seriously don't think Mario Galaxy is suited without them. When it came to the Switch, I played it split Joy-Con just like Nunchuck and Wiimote. And I, I think it's such a good time. The physics are phenomenal and it's super impressive that this game is on the Wii. The graphics look great. The enemy design is phenomenal. Like, I can't say enough good things about this game. And I don't really know how to describe it well enough to share with you guys how much I love it. But seeing as it was one of the first games I beat by myself, I was really proud of myself with it. I remember my brother beat it originally, and then I beat it. And we like, you know, we sort of like vibed about that. We were like, ah, you know, he was proud of me. And, and I, I thought it was really cool because, I don't know, as a little kid, when your brother's like, good job, Joes, I'm like, oh, holy shit. I did do a good job. That was something that I did. Like, it was something worth being proud about. But the thing with Mario Galaxy is it was so easy to beat. Not because it's an easy game, but because I just kept coming back to it day after day, loving it, and just kept going. Like, I, I didn't have a day where I stopped or where I was like, oh, this game is kind of slogging. And even now, when I replayed it, I replayed it and, and beat it, like, in a couple days. Because I, I fell so in love with this game and yeah, nostalgia might blind me a little bit and Odyssey is probably objectively a better game and I love Odyssey. But this game is stunning, it's impressive, it's fun, and it holds up very, very well. I think, yes, if you didn't grow up with the Wii generation, those controls can be kind of a slog or pain to adjust to, but goddamn, I mean, it's a good game. I, I'm losing the words to describe how much I love this game, but just trust me, it's a good ass game. And if you haven't played it, what are you doing? You gotta play this game. I mean, it's so good. But that's my list. That's my top 20 games of all time. Let me know your list in the comments down below. If you liked the video, remember to subscribe and check out my ranking of the Zelda games over there. Hope I didn't get too deep and personal for y'all. I wasn't trying to get like mushy, but a lot of these games have a very special meaning to me, and that's why they're on the list. So, there it is. I'll see you in that video.